Hello guys, Swaroop here. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about something called control array. What is that? Well, we know that in C language, we have gone through something called an array, which is basically a homogeneous data type. So an array was working on primitive data types, or even we can work on string data type. But with the progress of time, thing has got really changed. Now we have a concept that Suppose if I require five buttons, so will I go and drag and drop five times five buttons? Or if I require a five text box, will I drag and drop five different text box? Can we make this process somewhat different? And with that perspective, control array comes in picture. So basically these are the different components. These are different controls. And I will be making use of these controls for generating an array, which is basically known as control array. So let me run the program. If you see the program, then you will understand that I am creating a calculator over here. And for my calculator, I require uh, 10 buttons in form of numeric values from 0 to 9. So I don't want to create this 10 button uh, at the time of development. See here, this particular segment is completely blank. So the button was not developed. Rather, dynamically, the button is getting developed. And yet it is going to perform some tasks. Suppose I click the button 1, value came 12 plus 3 equals to 15. Uh, calculation is working pretty smooth and fine. I can go for clear also. So how exactly this is working? That's what we are going to see. Okay. So let's come to the, uh, here is my solution explorer. You can right click on this, go to the view code and it will take me to the code window of the corresponding project. Okay. So if you see over here, what I have done is that there are some couple of GUI component. So you can figure out these things right from here. This is a label where the data will be displayed. These are respective buttons for performing operation or the operators. This button cannot be generated by control error because they are not in sequence. They will be in random and these are different operators. So you have to give them a different name as well. And so these buttons has to be created at the time when you're developing the program. And here you have, I have given the name for respective buttons. Okay, now uh, this is something called a panel, which you can see right over here, flow layout panel. Basically, this particular panel will help you to embed the button within this particular panel. If this panel is not there, then the button will be randomly generated within the current form and that will look pretty ugly. So you need to create this particular form layout and this form layout, I didn't give any names because this is just to write for the first time and that's all. So uh, if you want, you can change the name. And you have to use this particular name in the coding, letting the button know that the form, that this is the layout within which the button has to appear. Okay. So let's go and check it out what is happening the time when we are creating this button. So right from the very beginning, we have got a couple of variables, uh, no, three variables for taking two input and the result. This is the uh, variable which will be holding the operator. Basically, the operator will be represented by a string variable. The time when the form is loaded, it is giving a call to this particular function called button array. That's the name which I have chosen. You are free to choose whatever name you want. This is the function that is creating my control array since we have to represent 0 to 9 numbers. So my iteration starts. We are creating an array of this particular component, which we call it as a control array. So this is a reference variable of the class called button. Now the button will have a size. Well, when you're creating the button at the time of program, you can drag it according to your requirement. But when you're creating it dynamically, you need to specify the size. Here is the length and the width I have mentioned. Now uh, every button should have a value, right? As you can see over here, if you see this value 0, 1, 2, 3, this value has to be represented. Otherwise, how the user will come to know. So in that case, the i, the i is an index, right? This is the loop and it can solve my purpose. So i dot two string will be will be converting the numeric value to the string type and then it will embed within the button okay so embedding takes place over here now what we are going to do every button should have an event called click event we all know that the button will always have a click event like for example the plus operator or the plus button whatever you call it if i double click on this button it will also have a click event see over here i have got a click event so naturally the button which I'm going to generate dynamically, this button should also have a click event. Suppose if I click the button 3, the value will come right over here. If I click the button 8, the value will come right over here. So these buttons should have a click event. So all the button will also require a click event. That is what I'm doing right over here. So you can see the button underscore click. So btn is the name of the reference variable underscore click. I have added because we can see that every button will always have an event called click. So that's the reason I have written this one. And plus equals to means all the button that means 10 button generated all the button will be having this particular event and this button has been specified to 
get displayed in this particular panel only not outside the panel okay fine very nice now what i am going to do when i will be clicking this particular button at the runtime suppose if i click this button at the runtime the first thing it should do is that it should display the text in the label okay similarly any button if i click it should display the text in the label and the previous value should also be retained suppose 32 is a value that is there and suppose if i go and click 8 so 32 should be retained along with the value 8 it should not be like overwriting that is not the case previous value should be there so you need to go for a concatenation and that is what i'm doing in regard to button click so this particular function has been defined right over here and this function i am creating it and uh, just keep it in mind this click event should be there okay so since i am receiving the data from the button so this particular reference variable is very important sender okay here we are going to tell that where from the data is coming it is coming from this particular reference variable and i have written the uh, value as btn and what i am going to do whenever i will click the button the respective text that is embedded in the button should be displayed in the label okay now why have i written this one if i will not write this one suppose if i am removing this one and now if i am compiling my program then what will you see very naturally you will see only one value at a time okay you cannot see the previous values which is coming over there because you are just putting see the value 2 is there but now the moment i'll go for the value 2 will be eradicated because you are not concatenating so this is not the right way of doing so concatenation is very well required okay so that's the requirement of uh, the program now if i click this one now if i click value 2 value 4 the value remains so that was a portion of concatenation that is taking place over here now uh, how the flow of control is taking place first thing what you will do is that you will click any of the values so values coming over here then you are supposed to click any of these operator the moment you will click the operator two things has to take place first of all i will be registering this value in a, in, in a, in a particular variable so that the label can be cleared off and at the same time which operator did i click that also has to be kept in mind let's go and check it out suppose i'm clicking the plus operator the value is no longer in the label because i'm supposed to give a new value uh, as i press the button and uh, the previous value will be stored in a variable and this particular operator also has to be retained because suppose if i'm giving two and then i will hit the equal to i have to check what was the content of the operator variable accordingly you have to display a calculation right so the moment i will click any of these operators the thing will be very common the first thing you are doing is that you're fetching the value from the label which is by default a text type you have to convert into a string type and then you are storing in a variable and i have already declared a string type variable at the top which you can see right over here so it has to be within quotation okay respective uh, symbol within quotation and you are clicking clearing the label so the next value can be provided okay so once you provided the next value the next thing what you will do you will click the button i uh, button a uh, equal to well you are clicking the button equal to uh, at that point of time you will be having a new value right so suppose i have clicked 12 and then i'm clicking the operator minus and now i'm clicking 3 so when i will be clicking equal to this three should also be stored in a variable right then only you can go for the calculation so that's what i'm doing right over here so i'm storing the second numeric value which the user has given the variable n the previous one is in the variable m okay now i'm going to compare so there is a function called compare where i will be using the string variable that is holding the operator and here i'm going for the respective operator if the comparison is found to be true it will return me zero and then i will go for the respective calculation and after that i will display the result in the label hey wait before you display the result in the way in the variable you remember the r is a string type so you cannot directly spring the value in a label which is by default a text type so you have to go for type conversion just remember whenever you are fetching the value from a label you have to fetch the value in the text type and then you have to convert to the integer type in the same way the reverse process has to be done when you're displaying integer value in a label you have to convert it back to the text type very simple okay you have to remember these two things receiving there will be conversion displaying there is going to be a conversion as well okay so compare two will be receiving two parameters the first parameter will be the operator that is holding the value in the form of a symbol and it will be compared with this particular value if the match is found if the match is found to be true then it will return me zero and that's how the thing will be going on and what else i have a function called label nothing very simple i will clear the content i will clear all the value which is there and will make it zero so the process can be repeated i hope this particular video will help you understand this whole program and this control area is very important because every now and then we have to work on this particular concept okay so that's all for this video wait for my next video until then have a nice time